In this lesson we're going to look at how to successfully use a comma in our writing. First off, let's begin with recognising what a comma is. And not to mix it up and confuse it with an apostrophe. So a comma will go on to the line of writing. Whereas an apostrophe, if we think of the word don't, with an apostrophe in it, you can see an apostrophe is in the air, it's not on the line, but a comma is on the line. When do I use a comma? Well, commas are used in a list to give extra information and to separate two parts of a sentence. And we'll go through each of these three scenarios with lots of examples. In our first example, let's look at the use of a comma to separate items in a list. In the pet shop, there was a dog, a cat and a rabbit. Let's see the rest of the sentence. So in the pet shop, there was a dog, a cat and a rabbit. We have to separate the items. So we have dog and cat and we need to separate them with a comma. And because rabbit is the last item, we can use and before it. So our sentence reads, in the pet shop, well, there was a dog, a cat and a rabbit. And we can see our comma between dog and cat. Here are two more examples where a comma needs to be used to separate items in a list. Our first sentence, Jack didn't know what game to buy in the shop. He spent ages looking at FIFA, Mario, Minecraft and Sonic the Hedgehog. So again we need to separate the items. So we've got the item FIFA, Mario, Minecraft and Sonic the Hedgehog. The list of games that he looked at. So our comma needs to go between FIFA and Mario. Between Mario and Minecraft. And because Sonic is the last item in the list we can use AND before it. Our second sentence. Sarah knew exactly what she wanted from the toy shop. She grabbed a teddy, a hula hoop, some Lego and a new book. Again, we've got the items of a teddy, hula hoop, Lego and a book. So we need to separate the items with a comma. So a comma between teddy and hula hoop, a comma between hula hoop and Lego. And we can use and before the book because it's the last item in our list. Can you spot the problem in these two sentences? The ball was red and blue and yellow. The dog had brown fur and long ears and sharp teeth. Well, hopefully you spotted that the, uh, the word and has been used a little bit too often. We can remove and and use a comma. So with our first sentence, we can use the ball was red, blue and yellow. Again, and it's okay when it comes before the last item in the list. And our second sentence, the dog had brown fur, comma, long ears and sharp teeth. In my mum's handbag, there is a camera and a tissue and a phone and a packet of mints. So again, as the sentence was being read, hopefully you recognise that the word and has been used a little bit too often and it needs to be replaced with commas. So let's put in, let's take out our ands and put in a few commas. In my mum's handbag, there is a camera. You can remove this and. A tissue. You can remove the next and. A phone and a packet of mints. And now we can put in our commas. In my mum's handbag there is a camera, comma, a tissue, comma, a phone and a packet of mints. Both of these sentences are missing their commas. I would like you to see if you can find the correct place and position where the comma belongs. If you listen to how the sentence is read, it will give you a big clue in where to position your comma. So our first sentence. At the birthday party, we ate chocolate, sandwiches, jelly and ice cream. Sam frightens the cat, 
teases the dog, bullies his brother and annoys the neighbours. At this point I'd like you to put in the commas and then come back to check if you got them correct. So, our first answer then. At the birthday party we eat chocolate, comma, sandwiches, comma, jelly and, uh, and cake. And again, the and can come just before cake because cake is the last item in the list. And our second sentence. Sam frightens the cat, comma, teases the dog, comma, bullies his brother and annoys the neighbours. And again, you can see and before the last item in the list. Here are commas to pause between two lots of information. We queued for the concert for four hours, comma, but we didn't manage to get tickets. When he saw the pirate ship on the horizon, the captain gave the alarm. So on this occasion, the comma has been used between two lots of information. So a really long sentence. Gives us a little breather with the comma almost in the middle. Okay, can you find where the comma is going to belong in each of these four sentences? But let's do the first one together. Wait a minute, I'll be very quick. So we're using a comma here for a little pause between two pieces of information. So it's wait a minute, comma, I'll be very quick. Okay, have a go with the three remaining questions, then come back to check your answers. <music> Sentence two. Can we have chips tonight? I'm not very hungry. So we need a comma between tonight and I'm. Can we have chips tonight? I'm not very hungry. Sentence three. I missed the bus again. It must have been early. So I missed the bus again, comma, it must have been early. And sentence four, Connor was amazed he had never got a house point before. So Connor was amazed, comma, he had never got a house point before. The policeman, who had been running for five minutes, had to take a rest. In this sentence, Two commas have been used to add a clause. A clause is an extra piece of information. The sentence could have said, the policeman had to take a rest. But a clause makes the sentence more detailed. So the middle section of the sentence, who had been running for five minutes, is the extra information that we're supplied. And we are given it by adding in some commas. Here we're going to add in some extra information using two commas. So our clause will be the red section. For example, I could write Jane, comma, my sister, comma, lost her cat. So I have taken piece of information from the blue writing. My clause, you can see, is from the red writing. And then I take a last bit of information from the green. So Jane, my sister, lost her cat. And I use commas around my sister because that's the clause, that's the extra information. So this screen provides you a great opportunity to practice using two commas within a sentence whenever you're giving extra information. I can make up another sentence. Thomas, the pop star, went to see his friend. And I would use a comma just before and after the pop star. You can pause your screen now and you can practice writing a few sentences. Remember to put a, a comma before and after the clause and the clause is the extra information in red. In these sentences, we get to practice using a comma in all of the three ways that we've just practiced. So, within a list, to pause within a sentence, 
and we can use commas around a clause, which is extra information. So we'll do the first one together, and then you can do the last five. So sentence one. The monster was huge, fat, and spiky. So I need a comma between huge and fat. The monster was huge, fat, and spiky. Okay, you can pause your video. Have a go at adding the commas to the five remaining sentences. Then come back to check. Sentence two, overcome by emotion, she sobbed. Overcome by emotion, comma, she sobbed. Sentence three, the huge beast screamed, fell to the ground, rolled over and died. So the huge beast screamed, comma, fell to the ground, rolled over and died. So the huge beast screamed, comma, fell to the ground, comma, rolled over and died. My neighbour, Mr Green, is a delightful person. So Mr Green is the extra information, so we need commas around it. If you're free on Tuesday, let's go. So if you're free on Tuesday, comma, let's go. And our final sentence, the kitten, a beautiful tabby, was quite enchanting. So the kitten, comma, a beautiful tabby, comma, was quite enchanting. We have commas around the extra information, which is a beautiful topic.